All right, they say the third time is the charm. Let's see if we can get full power out of this battery here that we designed. And this is the battery that we're talking about is the 24 volt Boston swing module that we've uh, designed. Remember, I tested this twice before trying to see if we can get full power out of these, uh, you know, the output, the positive and negative over here in the top. Now, last time, this board was getting really hot. And so as a result of that, we have to rate it at 50 amps in here, which is 50% of what the cells can do. And then I said, if you need full power out of this module, you're gonna have to connect your, your output over here on these three little connectors over here. That's positive and then this is negative, which is uh, not great because if you're gonna be using a bunch of these and putting them side by side, then these cables are kind of going to be in the way. And it's just not symmetrical. The output should be on both sides of the, of the cell like that, of the pack, right? So now I've redesigned this top board uh, again for the second time, third time. <laughs> this is the third time that I'm going to be doing this. And what I ended up doing was something very simple. I just uh, made a second board. So there's two boards up here on top. And this top one right here, it's basically just to carry the current from here all the way to here and both sides. So there's a big layer in here. All this whole pad right here, this whole layer of copper is carrying the negative from this side of the battery to this side of the battery. And then on the opposite side, on the underside of this board is the same thing, just a big trays going in there. So now there's thick traces going from this side of the battery to that side of the battery. Let's see if now we can sustain 100 amps, right, which is what the battery can do. So this was the bottleneck. And now let's see if we can load it. We're going to load it up with this 3000 watt inverter. And that's connected to our heater here. And then we're going to measure this through here. And then this is going to monitor the cells in here. The cells are pretty match. They're, they're perfectly within 32 millivolt uh, balance. So let's do that. And then we'll look at the thermal camera to see how hot this gets, right? And if it gets too hot, then we missed our mark. But if it stays cool, then now we can rate this at 100 amps right here. That's our target. Let's go. Uh, it's loaded at 39, 40 amps. Let's add more load in here, 60. 75, 80, 82. Let's try 80 first and then put the thermal camera. So that's 81 amps. Let's put the thermal camera, see what the cables are doing before I add the full 100 amps. Right. All right, that's 100 right there. Let's see how hot that stuff gets. saying the voltage is too low 21 volts so there we go 20 minute test okay so summary success we were able to remove power at a rate of 100 amps which is the max or very near the max of what the little cells can do right and so now the bottleneck is the cells or maybe this little region here so what we're gonna do is just put a note on our um you know, build a uh, thing there to put uh, extra, just double up on the uh, nickel strips here, down, going down this side, and that should help out lower the, the, uh, the temperature on this section here. So now 
basically this is gonna be able to handle the same as the cells, right? That was not bad. The, we did it, uh, look at that, so that's 8.9. So about 80% of the capacity we were able to remove at peak. Now, stuff got hot, right? And of course, cells are gonna get hot at peak if you run at peak. So the, you don't design your systems to run this at 100 amps, you know, up to 100 amps, you know, when you're, whatever it is, if you're putting this on a little motorcycle or an e-bike or a thing or whatever, it's just like, when you hit it, uh, you know, only for X amount of time, right? Don't do 100% depth of discharge at peak because then you're gonna kill your cells really quickly, right? And so then, uh, but I wanted to be able to remove the max, the continuous max on this. Obviously bursts, this can handle a lot. Maybe this can handle two, 300 amps, you know, for a, for a minute or for, you know, a few seconds or something. So just like the cells, right? The cells can handle a bit more for a short amount of time, but then after that, they'll start heating up and they'll reach their max temperature. And then, you know, you'll run into problems doing that. So there you go. Doing two of these uh, 10 gauge cables is plenty to remove a hundred amps. These can carry that. Um, and so there you go. Now there's a module 1.1 kilowatt hour and you can remove, you can load it with 2.4 kilowatt, right? And so when you're designing your battery system, whatever load that you have, these might serve you well if you need that kind of power at this kind of size, right? Obviously you can double this up, you know, put another one and another one, another one, connect them in parallel, and then connect your BMS in here. By the way, I am making these little adapters here so that when you connect, you can connect your ribbon here and then your bms can just go onto this little screw terminals and so that way you can easily just connect your bms right but the advantage of having these is that you can put a bunch of these modules and then just daisy chain them right connect them all in parallel first right so that they balance each other and then after that you connect your ribbon all the way and then you connect your bms and now this whole, you know, all your modules that are parallel become one single battery system so you can use one BMS. And we have this one, and then we have the 8S version for the lithium iron phosphate one. And then we have several other ones that we're gonna be using just in case, like for example, you wanna connect two of these in series, right? So that you can run 48 volts, which is a lot of people are going to do that. Then you can connect both uh, of these modules into a board that then is just gonna combine them and then you can just plug in your 48 volt or 14S BMS. So that's coming up also. But as of this test right now, it took three times to get this right, but now we're gonna label this 100 amp continuous, right? Um, and then we're gonna beef up this section right here and that section so that it doesn't get too hot, as hot as it got. Uh, and that way everything heats up evenly, right? So that we don't have uh, bottlenecks in here. Basically the bottlenecks are gonna be the cells, the, the, the ability of the cells to move their power out. So there we go. This is a 24 volt module, 1.1 kilowatt. It's capable of 100 amps. Uh, it's going to be the 2.2 version of this which is okay because I think uh, we're making them as we're selling them. So everything that is going to ship from now on is going to have this extra layer and it's going to be this version. So there you go. This is going to be at jack35.com. If you need uh, this module, then you can just go there and then uh, you get it. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys on the next one.